Are the SpaceX Starlink version 2 mini satellites simply a band-aid? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're talking about Starlink today. There's something massive that happened yesterday that I have to report on today. So what has happened? Well, we see that RS Technica as well as PC Magazine did a full article on this because it is so big. And what it is, it's the SpaceX Starlink version two minis. Once again, version two. These aren't the version one satellites and not the version 1.5 satellites. These are version twos finally were launched as of yesterday. And I think there was about 20, 21 of them or something that went up into LEO, into low earth orbit. Really exciting news, but the question is, is this a Band-Aid? And this is what I'm going to get into today. Anyways, if you're here and you're enjoying this video, even in the least, please consider throwing a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Also, if you get a chance, head over to my website, jchristina.com forward slash books. There, you'll be able to get my eBooks for free, just for you being here. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there is a little thank you button down there. Thank you, YouTube, for doing that for us. You can click that thank you button or maybe even not. That's great too. Maybe consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you have not subscribed to the channel as of yet, why the hell not? Just subscribe. We have a lot of great content here. Click that subscribe button and then click this little notification button over there. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So let's get right into this. This is very fascinating to me because the last three, four videos, we've been talking about speeds and we've been talking about pricing and a whole bunch of shortcomings from SpaceX Starlink when it comes to latency as well as speeds. So this is a very interesting time because now we're finally moving into the next generation of internet satellites from SpaceX. Now bear in mind, these new satellites will not be in an orbital height or distance from the planet it for about two, three weeks. Sometimes it takes up to two months. So it's not going to happen immediately. But these new satellites are said to be four times faster or have four times more capacity than the previous Generation 1 units. Now, let's dive right into this PC Magazine article. I'll read some of it to you and then I'll give you my commentary. I think they got a lot of it right, but I want to add to what they've said in this article. So it starts out with, perhaps in a bid to to placate customers irate by recent Starlink price hikes. Yeah, we just talked about that. SpaceX is offering more details on its second generation Starlink satellites, which the company says will feature at least four times the capacity for serving users compared to its earlier counterpart. This means Starlink can provide more bandwidth with increased reliability and connect millions of more people around the world with high-speed internet access. This is what the company said on Sunday, which includes the first official photos of the so-called version 2 satellites. I'll bring them up maybe right here or somewhere so you can see what they look like. They look really cool and you can see how matte black they are. And I'll get into that by the end of this video also. According to SpaceX, version Version 2 satellites are designed to provide even faster speeds by incorporating more powerful phase array antennas capable of beaming internet data to users on the ground. In addition, the satellites will use the E-band radio spectrum for backhauling purposes. Now remember, I spoke about that a few months ago where Starlink has gotten in bed with T-Mobile and they're kind of got this partnership going on. They're going to use these brand new satellites to do backhauling for T-Mobile. Very interesting. SpaceX offered the details days after it increased prices for many Starlink customers across the U.S. We spoke about that in the last video. Those living in areas with limited capacity must now pay $120 a month, up from $110. Meanwhile, subscribers residing in areas under capacity only need to pay $90 per month, basically a reduction of $20. The company hasn't explained why the raise of prices, but the increase comes as speeds for Starlink have been falling for many U.S. subscribers over the past year. The likely culprit 
network congestion. The satellite internet system has become oversubscribed across the country, resulting in a degraded bandwidth quality, which has sparked SpaceX to impose a high-speed data cap later this year. Now, they're just speculating here because we really don't know if that's going to actually happen. Supposedly, by April 24th, somewhere around there, there's going to be this data cap implemented, but they keep pushing that back, so it might not happen. We will see. The second-generation Starlink network, which the FCC approved in December promises to resolve capacity issues facing the system. On Sunday, SpaceX also published a document going over some of the features of the version 2 satellites. SpaceX didn't specify what kind of download or upload speeds can be expected from the version 2 hardware, but the company has created two versions of the version 2 satellites, one of which can fit on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets. The other satellites will be compatible with the company's up-and-coming Starship vehicle, which is slated to kick off its first test launch, possible as soon as next month. Now, here's a quote from SpaceX. They say, when we launch the version 2 satellites on Falcon 9, they will not be the full-size versions that are designed to be launched on Starship, the company explains. The version 2 satellites launched on the Falcon 9 are a bit smaller, so we affectionately refer to them as version 2 mini satellites, but don't let the name fool you. The version 2 too many satellites have four times the capacity to serve users compared to its earlier counterparts. So that's really impressive if you think about it because these are smaller and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. Now the version 2 satellites also feature new Argon Hall thrusters which are over two times more powerful than the earlier thrusters to help them maneuver in orbit and dodge space junk. We know there's a ton of space junk up there and there's going to be a lot more as more countries launch satellites into LEO. In addition, the company has upgraded the satellite's design to prevent them from reflecting light and disturbing astronomical observations. That's what I was talking to you about previously. They are now blacked out. They look pretty cool. They have like this matte black finish to them, so they do not reflect the light from the sun. You won't see those dots in the sky or as readily when they're up above because you're not going to have that reflection of the sun or not as much of it with this anti-reflective black matte finish to it. Very cool. Now, SpaceX is also quoted in saying, these version 2 mini satellites may be somewhat bright initially, especially during orbit raising and initial operations, but our track record demonstrates SpaceX will work tirelessly to refine the design, manufacturing, materials, and operational mitigations and continue to work with astronomers towards reducing brightness of our satellites. The FCC has cleared the company to launch 7,500 satellites satellites for the second generation satellite constellation. Those are those version 2s or version 2 minis. SpaceX also plans on upgrading satellites in the existing first generation network with more powerful hardware to help improving capacity. So that is very interesting. They're saying 7,500 are approved, but there's about 30,000 of the version 2s that are slated to be launched. So right now the FCC has approved 7,500. That's great. Also, just so you know, on Monday or yesterday, they launched 21 of these version 2 minis into orbit. Once again, it will take a little while before they get into an orbital height, let's say distance from the planet at about, I think right around 550 kilometers. It takes some time for them to get to that path. But once they're there, then they will be turned on and they'll be operational. Also, they just launched an additional 51 of the 1.5s. So if you didn't know it, there's actually four versions of satellites so far. You have the version 1, the version 1.5, the version 2 mini, and then the version 2. All right. Now, the version 2 is the big honking one that cannot be launched on a Falcon 9 rocket. It's just simply too big. So they created this version 2 mini, which is a smaller condensed version that they actually flip and rotate so it fits inside that tip of the rocket. Now, the version 1s do not have any type of inter-satellite, satellite-to-satellite communication through lasers, whereas the version 1.5s do. So the 1.5s are going to be able to talk to the 2.0s and the 2.0 minis without a problem. 
The version 1s will most likely be relegated to the version 2s and they'll be deorbited or whatever. Or they'll just leave them there for their 3-5 to five year lifespan anyways and then they will deorbit themselves. So what's very interesting I find here is with these minis, they have that new propulsion system on it. Their Argon Hall, whatever you want to call it. And I think that that's very interesting because SpaceX is brutally aware of the amount of junk. We call it junk. But the amount of stuff that's in orbit as of right now. Now, in LEO, in the next or low Earth orbit, that 500, let's call it kilometers up and so, that is going to become a traffic jam in the next 10, 20 years. You have companies like OneWeb and others that want to launch a ton of satellites into orbit. You have whole countries like China that say that they're going to be launching thousands and thousands of satellites to compete with Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink. So there's a lot going on in LEO. And by them putting that propulsion system or the new one that allows the satellite to be more maneuverable, I think that is a big, big deal. And I think that's also a big deal to possibly prevent any type of disruption by other countries, let's say, trying to shoot these things out of the air. All right, I'm not going to get into all that and when it comes to military stuff, but those propulsion systems are there for a reason. And I think a lot of that has to do with, yes, avoiding debris, but also avoiding other things. <laughs> That's in my personal opinion. So I am excited about this. But like I said at the very beginning, is this a Band-Aid? And a lot of people don't realize this, but it is a Band-Aid. There was a problem with getting Starship off the ground. The FCC, there was government problems. There was all kinds of problems that ended up happening with just delays and delays and delays. If not, Starship would have been up there long, long, long time ago, many moons ago. All right. Last year, they were saying that they were going to get the version twos, which is the big daddies, into orbit, but they couldn't. And now they have said, you know what? This is taking too long. We need to do something because our capacity is just, it's gone. All right. We are now working on borrowed time. We're having to reduce speeds. Latency is going up. We're having to charge more. Our customers are getting pissed off. We do not have a call center. We have no money. We need to do something. Something. So what they did is they shrunk, all right? They used a little shrinking beam on the SpaceX Starlink version 2 satellites and turned them into a mini. And then we're able to now change the orientation of those to put them into the top end of that Falcon 9. Obviously, the payload area can only take 21 of them because they're so much bigger than those version 1.5s. Now, what they were saying is the weight on them are about three times as heavy. So you're over like 800 kilograms or something in comparison to under 300 kilograms with the version 1.5s. So you're talking about three times its mass. So it just simply makes sense. So 21 of them can go up of the version 2 minis where they can put over 50, close to 60 of the version 1.5s. That's all good. That's fine. So this is, once again, exciting. But remember, it is a Band-Aid. Things are going to turn around the minute that we see the big daddies, the version 2s up there in LEO. I think it's going to be a major, major turnaround. And I do believe a lot of the people that are currently on the waiting list will no longer be on a waiting list after the version 2s are actually launched. Supposedly, in the next few months, we're going to see Starship up there dropping off those version 2s. But let's not hold our breath as of yet because we know governmental problems as well as FCC problems and a lot of problems come to pass and they have to be rectified, resolved, or paid. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, as a point of reference, the version 1s or the 1.5s do have a downlink capacity of about 17 to 23 gigabits per second, whereas the new ones, the version 2 minis, are four times faster. So you're looking at close to 100 gigabits per second of a downlink. That is massive, as well as being able to provide backhauling for the likes of T-Mobile. So there is a lot that's going to be happening with these version 2 minis, but once again, it is a band-aid until the actual version 2s are able to be launched. 
much bigger, faster, larger, more capacity. And for me, I do believe some of those version twos, like I've said in the past, will be Knox or network operation centers. They haven't talked about this. You haven't heard it anywhere but here. And I've said it for months and months and months, probably close to six months to a year. They will be Knox or network operation centers. And a lot of the transactional stuff that's currently happening between satellite, ground station, and pop, a lot of that stuff is going to be happening in Leo or up non-terrestrially, up in the air, so that they will be feeding data between each other through the speed of a vacuum-based laser, which is fast as hell. Basically, it's like fiber optics around the world. So they'll be able to get data from one side of the planet to the other side of the planet just simply by bouncing it from satellite to satellite to satellite via the laser communication in a vacuum. So even faster, it is going to be amazing. I'm going to say that we're going to see speeds all the way down to probably like 20 milliseconds, maybe even 15 milliseconds from this new version two that we see once they are live. Right now, we're seeing anywhere from about 40 to 50 milliseconds. That will be cut in half. That's my personal opinion because once again, a lot of the transactional data stuff is going to be happening in Leo and not on the ground. That's my prediction. We will see if that ends up happening. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. Do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.